Hello there everyone and thank you for joining us today. I'm Deborah from Govol Hearts and welcome to our latest volunteer spotlight session. In this series we aim to introduce you to some of the organisations operating in Hertfordshire so you can find out about the work they do and how you could get involved as a volunteer. Please remember to subscribe to the Govol Hearts YouTube channel and click the bell to get notifications when we post a new video. This week, I'm here with Katie Malkin from the Vegan Society. Thanks for joining me, Katie. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm really looking forward to doing this <laughs> and hopefully um, sp spread these roles to some more interested people. OK, so I think veganism has become more mainstream over the past few years. So most of us, I think, will understand what it means to be a vegan. Some people will be vegan themselves. Most people will I guess would probably know someone who's vegan and be used to seeing foods which are saying are suitable for vegans. Uh, so that that's a lot more, lot more mainstream than we were like ten years ago, I suppose. But can you tell us a bit more about your society and and what you do? I think you have a presentation to to share yes. with us. I can share that now but yeah it's um, it's great to see the movement growing and the good thing as well amongst vegans is that they're very passionate about veganism so um so they want to volunteer they want to do something for the cause so hopefully will there'll be some vegans who see this um and think oh this might be for me so yeah if you're watching this and you're you're vegan you're 18 or over then hopefully this will be something that's of interest to you so um we're the vegan society as deb said and we're a charity based in the uk who were formed way back in 1944 so our founder actually coined the term vegan himself mm -hmm. um Way back when he started the charity and we've grown a lot since then so like a lot of um charities we started with one person now we have i think it's about 60 staff now we have over 200 volunteers which is just amazing mm -hmm. um our real goal which has been our goal since we started is to increase the number of people trying out veganism going vegan and remaining vegan and then to support people when they are vegan. So making sure that places are catering for vegans, that they've got adequate nutrition education um, and all that kind of thing. So not just trying to get people to go vegan, but supporting them when they are as well. Mm. Um, so as well as campaigns, we also work with policymakers like MPs and councillors. We commission research to find out um, how we can support vegans better and what vegan looks like. Um, in the social environment, um, launch campaigns, and we have two dietitians on staff as well who give free nutrition advice to anybody who wants to get in touch, which is which is a great service. Um, some people might have heard of the Vegan Society already, but if you haven't, you've probably seen our little sunflower on products in the supermarket. So that's our trademark that businesses use to to say our product has been fully vetted. It's 100% vegan. It's been tried and tested. So vegans know if that trademark's on a product, they can really trust that it's 100% suitable for them. Um, you can see the um, you can see the sunflower in the top right as well on one of the logos. <laughs> so our volunteers do a lot of different things for us actually we call our outreach volunteers a community network and and that's really what they are a big community so we are based across the uk but at the moment we are really interested in getting some more people around hearts on board we have a few already but we'd really like to just increase that community feel for the outreach it would be really useful for us so the existing volunteers, they might ask high street eateries if they'll provide more vegan options. We have a free business pack that businesses can order. So our volunteers encourage businesses to order that pack. Um, we lobby MPs, other policymakers to influence laws so that it's easier for people to go and stay vegan. So a couple of years ago, veganism actually became protected right under law, like some mm. other some other cultural things so mm -hmm. that was a big win for us um 
And of course, things like holding stands to educate the public on how cheap a vegan diet can be, kind of get rid of some of the myths and misconceptions that it's not a healthy way of living or you might be nutrient deficient. Mm. And I think that's really timely with a kind of cost of living crisis and people struggling a lot more at the moment. We have a really great campaign called Live Vegan for Less, which kind of gives out free cheap easy recipe leaflets to places like food banks and communities that might be struggling a little bit more um so that they can eat well but also not have to break the bank to do so um and then just other things really we kind of do everything and anything to do with outreach so you know as well as holding the stands we'll promote the health benefits as well um so really just a little bit of everything and I think this graphic is just a really good thing that that kind of says everything that the volunteers do because as well as going out and about they'll also do things at home like signing petitions or posting things on social media for us emailing an mp mm. so there's really something in the network for everybody so within our network we do have two roles so we've got the organizer role and we've got the advocate role and we've got two lovely pictures here of two of our volunteers <laughs> Um, so the organiser role is a little bit more time intensive role. It's still very flexible, mm. but an organiser would be, for example, the coordinator or the caretaker of their local town or city. So they would be the one who kind of arranges events and then the advocates would help them to attend that event. So I guess kind of they're like the coordinator, the manager of the area. Mm. It's good to have one main point of contact so that Sure. Different people aren't, say, turning up to the same event, not knowing <laughs> that they're going, that kind of thing. So every month we send the tasks out to the organisers and the organisers would then kind of filter those down to any advocates that they've got working with them in the local area. Um, the organiser also gets an outreach pack through the post. Um, so like a T-shirt, leaflet, banners, everything that they could possibly need to hold an event. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, we support them with full training and all of that kind of thing as well. Um, so the advocate is a is a really similar role. It probably just doesn't have the responsibility as an organiser role. The organiser role is really good for people who maybe do want to get some skills in management or coordination or kind of booking events, that kind of thing. Mm. Um, and, but as an advocate, you still have that contact with me and the organiser, other advocates. It's very social. It's really nice. There's also that opportunity to do things from home as well. So that, as I said, the organiser would send the tasks out every month and then you kind of feedback on what you've completed, what you maybe you haven't completed, any kind of positive outcomes you've had. So that role's really flexible. And, you know, we have a lot of people in that role who, are, who work full time or as students who maybe can't do something one month, but they can do a bit more the next month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, it just really helps to have those roles um, flexible because, you know, student has a deadline for an assignment. They're probably <laughs> going to want to dip out of volunteering that month or maybe do something smaller just from home mm -hmm. that only takes an hour. And that's really good for that. So I have just made a little table which kind of shows the difference between those two roles. Um, as I say, it's still very flexible, but the organiser probably gives us about two days a month or more if there's someone who's like retired, not working and mm. wants to do more. You know, mm. some organisers kind of attend a day long event every fortnight, but some might only do one every two to three months and do other bits and pieces in between. So the, the community organiser passes the monthly tasks down to the advocates. They're usually quite well organised, um, happy to speak to the public, um, kind of good at answering emails and networking and, and getting back to us and kind of um, motivating some of the other volunteers to, to mm. do the tasks as well. So it's that kind of personality that we look for in that role. And of course, as I've said, they get that full induction and all the resources that they could need. The advocate, we're also looking for someone, I guess, who is quite outgoing, but maybe someone who's a bit less experienced, um, maybe not as organised, but he's still a team player. They might be passionate about veganism, but they've never done any kind of outreach or volunteering before. They may be just looking to kind of dip their feet in, see how it is. We do have a lot of people come on board as advocates and then 
after a few months when they're really enjoying it and they feel like they've got to grips with it they'll ask you if they can move into the organizer role mm. which is really really nice to see mm. them kind of build that confidence it's really lovely So, of course, we want to know what wins the volunteers have. We don't just want to send them out and not know what they're up to or like how they're making a difference to our work. Um, so I have just added a few wins that we've had in the last couple of months, really. Um, it's really great because when I was looking for these, uh, there was probably too many to list, which which was really nice for me to kind of look through and read as well when I was creating the presentation. Yeah. Um, so the first one is just an, an email that one of our lovely volunteers had from her MP. Um, he was really enthusiastic about veganism. We wrote to all, our, all of our MPs after the election in July, and this was a particularly positive response. He's actually now booked in a meeting with our public affairs team. Um, so we've got a, a really good, solid MP up in Glasgow on board with our campaigns which is a huge win for us and that's just mm. all of, off the back of a volunteer who's a constituent of his and reached out on our behalf so just sending one email sometimes can just have that massive impact for us um and of course there's, there's things that are a little bit more obvious on the ground going to events and kind of touching people's lives um we've had two two volunteers who have been to food banks in the last month and now we've got our leaflets and recipes in the food bank boxes for the next four weeks so those people will be getting like free food but the recipes that they can make with that food as well absolutely yeah um so hopefully that those people who who need to visit the food bank they're also getting some new ideas on how to get nutrition mm. in things that they can meet, make that are that are cheap with with those food items that they're getting so that's been really good and we've had some great feedback from kind of the food bank managers from that as well so we're hoping to do a little bit more of that um and then a real one-off one was one of our volunteers called Jane who helped to arrange like a vegan community lunch and that was really popular um it was free so non-vegans and vegans alike came together and enjoyed some really great food that Jane arranged um mm -hmm. with our help um and it was attended by her mayor and a local councillor as well that it got in the news a little bit so she was really happy with that and I mean more than that it was just really enjoyed by everybody and it just helped mm. to promote veganism as being good food rather than restrictive so that was really nice plenty of tea and cake I think from the pictures <laughs> which is which is always loved by anybody free tea and cake <laughs> absolutely <laughs> I wish I could have gone. I was too far away. I'm always I'm always up for tea and cake with the volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> and because there were so many wins, I did add another slide. Um, the picture is um, our dietitian Emily and one of our volunteers. They um, they attended a health event at one of the London universities together, which was really successful. So um, the students could take away information about kind of living healthily on a budget while they're at university. Um, and they could also ask Emily, our dietitian, questions that they had on the day as well. So that went really, really well. Again, you might be able to just see from the table. There's a few leaflets on there. There's a few free recipes on there as well. So that went really well. The volunteers tend to really like pairing up with members of staff and assisting them at these kind of things. While they might not be qualified dietitians themselves, they can help out members of staff who who have that experience yeah. in that field um it's just really great for them to get together and do that and it's it's always great feedback we get from that so we really do try and work staff and volunteers together as much as possible um and the other thing i was just going to mention is one of our real long-standing volunteers chris who's been with us for a really long time she's managed to get a display up in in her new climate center in saint Austell, which is down in cornwall so that's mm. a went a little bit further away but um yeah that was really good because that one featured on the news as well a lot of people attended it I'm sure she said her MP attended it but I can't remember now someone in attended it that she was really pleased about I remember that much um <laughs> yeah and this is all just in the last few months so the volunteers mm make a huge impact for us they really really help to raise our profile to reach a lot of different people so the public as well as kind of people in the political space and we really couldn't do 
what we do without them they're they're absolutely amazing and i'll always shout out about them as much as possible right another picture of one of our other dietitians with a couple of our volunteers there at, um, at an event but we want the volunteers obviously to get as much out of the roles as possible themselves we don't just want to take from them and see what they can they can do for us and the wins that we can get from it so we try and make it as, as supportive and inclusive as possible. So all the volunteers get full training. They get a handbook. They get, you know, they have a chat with me. There's always options of follow up calls. And I'm always available for calls and emails from the volunteers. If there's anything that they feel like they need more confidence in or they need to upskill in, for example. So some of our volunteers a few months ago, really wanted to write to their MP but they'd never done it before they didn't think they'd get a response they just didn't know where to start so our policy manager Claire she ran a little workshop for them on how to get the best out of that and, and how to interact with their local MP and that's where we got some really good wins when they went and took that advice on board and then yeah. and did that so and that's just one training that we've done so we really go based off what the volunteers are asking for and want in terms of yeah. skills um so we, we try and give back to them as much as possible and we we do all the obvious things as well like we pay expenses if they travel to events they get that money back of course they get a lunch allowance if they're at an event all day we don't want anyone to be out of pocket for us mm. um and we also have socials as well as the training as well so actually we had one two nights ago um over zoom um where the organizers and advocates and me all just come together and share our wins, share what's been going well, tips, ask for advice, talk about what's not going so well and has anyone got any advice on on this, that and the other. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a really good space where people who might not know many other vegans around them physically in their circle can get together online and socialise with other, other like-minded people. So I know that the volunteers really enjoy doing that as well. And most volunteers do just come to us because they're passionate about veganism and they come kind of want to spread it out into the local area where they are a little bit more, um, which is great. And I think I've already mentioned that it is quite flexible around other commitments um, and there's that ability to network with staff. We get feedback on our campaign materials, how we run in the organisation. We often ask volunteers for their feedback on a lot, a lot of different aspects of how the charity runs um, because they're so integral to the way we work. Um, so some volunteers don't like that aspect of it, but it's an option for, for people who do want to get involved in a, a higher level. So I did add a little quote from one of our advocates, Sunita, um, about how how she really enjoys volunteering and, and kind of distributing leaflets and how she's surprised when she's out and about that people are more curious about veganism rather than anti-vegan. People will often come up and maybe just want to take a leaflet or just take a free recipe card, which is yeah. absolutely fine. Those, those do have our links on where for people to kind of go away and look if they don't want to speak to someone about it. Um, so she really enjoys doing that. Um, and she's been a, an advocate of ours for a couple of years now. Um, so that's it's really, really nice to see her enjoying that role. And she's really grown with that role and grown in confidence going out to events and talking to people. I think it can be quite nerve wracking at first. Yeah. Um, so uh, we do try and support people as much as possible where they need that confidence boost. And I did a little poster from a, another train that we did um, a few weeks ago. That was one of our dietitians did a really nice session for our volunteers and members about mental health and nutrition, how you can support kind of your mental health through the things that you eat and the things that you do. So that was a really nice kind of extra thing for the volunteers to get from us as well. And added some more quotes as well, mainly because I wanted to add this cute photo of Ruth, who found one of our campaign posters <laughs> on her walk <laughs> to the train and she wanted to take a selfie with it. So sometimes the volunteers send us some really random things, which is really <laughs> nice to see how excited they get when they see our name up, oh. up in their local area. That was yeah, very sweet. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so. I'm sure people can just read the quotes themselves, but at the bottom here, I've mentioned our, our volunteer impact report, which we 
we published earlier this year, but it was kind of based on 2023 stats. Um, there's a lot of stats in there. People like um, like to geek out over figures and that kind of thing. It has some really great case studies of our volunteers, but it also shows an overall satisfaction of what our volunteers get out of the role, what they mm. like about it. Um, there's some great quotes in there as well. So if anybody is interested in the role and likes that kind of thing and wants to read that, I'm happy to send a copy on as well. And yeah, I think this might be my last slide. Just to say, you probably gathered from this presentation that we're open for applications across Hertfordshire for both roles at the moment. As I've said, we have people dotted about, but we'd just like to have much more of a community feel in the county if possible, so that you know fellow vegans can get together, do events together, maybe approach a few eateries together, all that kind of thing that I've already mentioned. It would be really, really nice to have that. And um, if you're vegan, you're 18 and over, you feel like you have a knowledge of your local area, you know, you're quite sociable, you enjoy being vegan, is vegan you're enthusiastic about it, which I'm sure most of us are, um, and you have good communication skills, you're happy to kind of chat to other people or write to an MP, um, this could be a great role for you, I think, um, because it is very flexible around other commitments as well, and we're, we're always happy to answer questions and hear from people who might be interested. I did mention at the beginning that we're very inclusive and I will just say that we welcome people from all cultures, we're very diverse, we have volunteers who have some different additional needs, we do have a range of tasks available which, which I've already said about, so people who do just want to do things from home are welcome to apply because because they don't want to or, or unable to get to events um, and vice versa. So we really do encourage people who are not sure if they're suitable to just email me, have a chat with me and we can see what we can do. I think the, the role is so wide spanning that there hasn't been anybody yet who have, who have said to, no, you can't do this role because we can always adapt what they do to suit them and they can then still have an impact as a volunteer, which is which is br brilliant. It's suitable for people from a wide variety of backgrounds and competencies. So I hope that really encourages people who are a little bit unsure about volunteering because they they have any kind of different needs to go ahead and get in touch, really. And yeah, thank you for your interest. If you've watched this long, <laughs> if if you've watched till now then hopefully you are interested and you'll click on the link <laughs> thank you very much katie i mean a lot of people are looking for flexible opportunities because life happens unfortunately and we don't always have as much time as we'd like so that sounds like a, a great opportunity and you also touched on yeah. things like the social aspect of volunteering and and getting something out of it in a, in a professional sense, you know, doing something you might not have done that might look great on your CV. So lots to get out of volunteering for anyone. Yeah. There's the option, I think, to dip your toes in and then do more and more as you start to feel more confident in the role, which is which is great. And I mean, one of our volunteers, she's overseas for four months of the year. So she volunteers for us for like eight months of the year so that we have all kinds of flexibility around that. I just kind of take her off our list for those four months, pop her back on and and she she does it where she can. So we we're always eager to hear from people, even if they think that they may not fit the role um, and just have a chat with them. Yeah. Sure. So if you're at home when you're watching this and you think that this is something you'll be interested in, then uh, Katie and uh, colleagues at the Vegan Society be really pleased to hear from you. So if you go to the Go Bowl Hearts website, if you haven't already, the account is free to create and you can apply to join the, these volunteering opportunities. And I'm going to post a link to those in the chat for this video. Uh, the Vegan Society, like over 400 other organisations, have their volunteering roles on the Go Bowl Hearts website. So if you are looking for a volunteering role or you're an organisation looking to recruit volunteers, please feel free to get in touch with us. We are funded by Hertfordshire County Council, so our services are free to use both for organisations and for volunteers. <clears throat> I hope you'll join me next time. I'll be talking to another Hertfordshire charity about the work that they do and the volunteering opportunities that they have. 
Once again, thank you to Katie for telling us all about the Vegan Society and thanks to you at home for watching. Goodbye. Oh, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.